All right, I think we're live. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, let me just bring up the chat. Okay. Cool. Alrighty, let's see. Um, I cannot see anyone connected at the moment in any of the platforms, so I would just need someone um, letting me know if it's working on Facebook Live and uh, what's the other one? Twitch. Uh, I see some comments in YouTube, so let me know. Alrighty. Let me just finish up the setup here and we'll get started. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to grab some water, work some Facebook. Thanks, Luke. Um, give me one second, I'll be back. Alrighty. Cool. All right. Thank you for letting me know. Hey, Alex. Good to have you here. All right. So um, let's um, let's get started. <laughs> so we're going to continue, I guess, the the theme uh, that some of the other streamers have started with the Cupid. Uh, type of character thing. Um, I'm just gonna have a slightly different take on it. Uh, I want to do like, I don't know, <laughs> a more stylized sort of character, like a funny type of thing. Um, something that I don't, again, usually do and I think it could give you guys some, um, it will be a, a good project to uh, try different things and, you know, I'm, I might just try stuff that I haven't tried. So, uh, we're gonna do that. And it's not gonna be the. I don't know how to explain the the style. <laughs> I don't know if it is a style, but it's like a very um, quirky type of character. Not like the um, what's the name of this series? Uh, Adventureland, I think. Like the Finn, I think is the character. The guy, the one with kind of like a hoodie and has like the arms. When he bends the arms, it's not like a joint. It's it's more like a noodle type of thing. <laughs> I don't know that sort of thing. Um, again, it's something that I don't do often, so it'll be cool to to try it out. And of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, and I'll I'll get to them eventually. All right, so I'm just going to start by blocking this out uh, super easy. Again, it's going to be very simple, um, like Forky from the Toy Story. Nah, Forky? Nah. It's it's more like the like Finn from Adventureland. Um, you'll see. When when I block it out, you'll see what I, what I mean. Uh, so I'm going to start with this sphere. Let me just bring in the floor pointing in the right direction. Um, so this is going to be the head. Uh, just I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to append a cylinder. It's going to be very 
like a tube. <laughs> that's that's the style, like tube limbs, basically. Adventure time? Yeah. <laughs> adventure time. Yeah, not adventure land, adventure time. That's right. So that that sort of um it is it's slightly different. It's not exactly that, uh, but again, you'll see what I mean. So it's gonna like it's kind of like very tubular, no neck type of thing. I don't know if it's gonna make sense. So you'll see when when I block it out, um, you're probably gonna think this is gonna look awful, but and it might. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like this, like no, like if you if you think about the the sphere as the head, this would be kind of like the neck and it's just like a tube down for for the body and that's the body <laughs> that's it um let's just push the arms up yeah so that those will be the arms and i'm just going to duplicate this and i'm going to make the the legs. Um, so this is kind of like the first sort of tip or trick that I could give you about this guy. Um, again, it's going to be very, very stylized, but um, precisely because it's going to be like that sort of style. I'm just going to try to match this a bit. Yeah, should be alright. Um, so like I, like I said, if it's because it's going to be very stylized in, in that sense, um, it's kind of like stumpy and the legs are going to be shorter. Um, if I go ahead and do, let's say, um, mirror and weld, right? Um, to work on these, even if I split them into multiple subtools, so if the legs are two subtools, um, and I want to just do a red topology or, or like a quick uh, series measure of the whole thing, I might find some issues in here. So I'm just going to give it one leg. And once I do the red topology, I can mirror and weld that and it will maintain things a little bit easier. Um, hopefully you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. But yeah, this is these are gonna be the legs. And let's just let's just hold control and drag. That will duplicate that subtool uh, within this or that mesh within the subtool. It's just gonna be the feed like that. So <laughs> if you just is this is the first time that you came to to the channel, um this is this is what I do. <laughs> this is the type of things that I do. Um but you know it's it's all about building something and then we can start. I mean I'm gonna dynamish this whole thing. Hola Oscar saludos de España Thanks for tuning in Hey Miguel, Roger, glad you guys are here. All right, so we're gonna start with this <laughs> this weird weird character. Um, but the reason I wanted to set it up like this is because it is super simple, just using geometry that our primitives, uh, very simple geometry, cylinders, uh, spheres, and and things like that. Um, and then we can go ahead and move on into like more complex stuff and building it kind of like bit by bit. So. The first thing I want to do is I probably want to reduce the length of the arms a little bit because I didn't account for um, for the hands. Uh, so what I want to do with this is bring in a deformer, clicking on the gear icon here of the gizmo, and I'm going to go to taper, right? So taper allows me to basically do this. So I'm going to give it a, a bit of tapering, not too much. I want again I want to maintain that sort of consistent tubular shape, I suppose. Um, and I can uh, what is it? Holding shift. Let's do this way. So holding shift, um, I can get like integer numbers, so minus point two. So I can go to the other side and do the same thing. Holding shift minus point two, so it's the same thing. And then with the wide cone, I can change the tapering, uh, the curve itself. So I can just push it towards the the wrist, like so. 
I think that's fine. Um, and that's it. So very simple, minor, like little changes, uh, but that's all we need. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with everything else. So for the body, let's do the same, go to taper. And this is a pretty simple low res mesh, right? So we're going to keep it simple before we dynamesh. But um, I do these things so that we have something solid as a, as a base to start. So the same thing, hold in shift. And just by doing that, you know, we start to move away from that sort of rough blocking and, you know, start to get something a little bit, uh, a little bit interesting here. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Just a little bit of tapering there, except. And let's do, let's go ahead and move that leg up. I want to make it a bit more chubby and stumpy. There we go. Um, you can probably, um, I don't know if I want to taper that one, but yeah, I think that's fine. Um, the same thing we can do with the, with the actual head or this part of the head. And I think we're going to keep it very, again, very cylindrical or not cylindrical, uh, it's very cool. Um, bring in a tape of the former. And I'm just going to push it this way to to make it less less spherical, which is what I said I was going to do. But um, I think it just goes a little bit better if I, if I make it this way. All right. Now, this is still a super simple piece, right? Um, but at this point, we can just go ahead and bring in the thumbnail, for example, and you can see here, um, I'm discovering by, by the comments, but roughly you can, you can sort of see a quick version of the, the silhouette. So if I mirror and weld the, the leg, you can see it's just, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on that. So I can, you know, go ahead and take the, the arms and go, you know, it's better if it's up, but then I look at the silhouette, it's like, nah, not really. So I think... In general, this is this is looking good as a as a starting point in terms of the the silhouette and and the proportions, I suppose. I just un, I, I did an undo on the on the leg. It was just to show you. So yeah, I, I and by the way, I use this uh, thumbnail quite often to do that to sort of like check the the proportions and making sure that the silhouette is is all right. Um, let me see. Uh, motion bug. Can can you tell me about the smooth alt brush? Um, sure, I, I might use it. It's just a an alternative algorithm for the smoothing. So instead of um, decreasing volume, it's going to smooth out but inflate. So it's kind of like a an alternative version. But it's just there's nothing too complicated about it. It's just the the fact that it's a different way of smoothing things. So um, I use it often when um, when I have a very thin area. And I want to smooth it out instead of reducing the volume of that thin area. I just maintain that a little bit more. So it's just I'll just try both and see which one uh, works. Um, the the easiest way to think about it is the alternative version of the smooth. The smooth alt is um, is smoothing, but it's also inflating a little bit. Uh, Roger, I want to get into ZBrush, but I'm sure I haven't worked with uh, within Max for 17 years. Um, if you haven't used ZBrush, I mean, it's good to, to have some background in 3D, but the best way that I would say, and this is how I teach my um, my students in the Ultimate ZBrush Guide course, is forget about whatever you, you know about 3D software, because ZBrush is its own beast. Um, and it's better to start um, from scratch, like without any preconceived idea of 3D, or at, at least how what to expect from a 3D software, because it wasn't at the beginning. so. Um, and, and embrace like kind of like the weirdness of of Sirius, and that's what makes it like so unique. And at the end of the day, so easy to to work with. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you wanna give it a go. <laughs> uh, do you know how to do X Y Z multi-channel projection in Sirius? I do, but um, 
if you want someone to tell you how to do that properly and very very well um like they're achieving a, an incredible result um i will look into marlon nunez uh so my friend marlon he does um a lot of that like hyper realistic and um kind of like what is it like likeness <laughs> um i don't do that often i've done it and i do it for um sometimes for you know projects or like freelance work but um i don't do it often it's 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 easy i i, I use um c rap so this is a plugin called oops, z rap and i use that uh, but again it's a it's a different it's out of the scope of what i'm doing today to to explain it but yeah have a look at marlon Nunez. he'll he'll tell you what to do Raylene, start with the <laughs> with the ultimate serious guide course yeah um yeah the the guys um the students at the ultimate serious guide course are doing um really amazing work um with the with the course and it's like the one um it's kind of like the mushroom character let's see I can I can show you oh by the way I just want to plug in um something really cool from um, another student of mine actually let me just uh, do a quick plug here because there are a few things that I can show you that are quite interesting and I have a, a free workshop so it's not for beginners it's meant for you know more intermediate um, users so someone that already knows Sivrush, uh but it doesn't mean that you cannot follow it along it's just that I'm not gonna go into specifics like uh, click here to do you know to move around and this is how you move around Sivrush, or this is part of the UI I just simply jump into it and and, and work uh, but if you already have some knowledge of Sivrush, it would work so let me just give you a so this is the first thing that I want to show you so if you go to the uh, 3dconceptartist.com, I'll put it in the chat, right? And by the way, if you're already part of my email list, so if you get all the my tips and tricks every week and all of that, uh, you don't have to register. I will send you straight to the send you the things straight to your email, which is very convenient. But um, yeah, so if you go to this um, to this website, and it's the first thing that you see here. This is the the robot concept workshop is the one that is coming up um, later this week or in the weekend. And basically, if you just join or if you just register, all you have to do is just put an email that you want me to send you the links to, and your name, and that's it. So this is I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. It's three days, and each day is kind of like an hour, uh, roughly. And in three hours, I would say maybe a little bit more than three hours, um, we can get something like this going. Uh, and I go in real time. So I'm gonna show you a really cool uh, workflow in ZBrush so it's, it's ZBrush based but then uh, for rendering you can use whatever you want so I'm focusing on the workflow not the you know not the specifics of the software except ZBrush because that's the one that I use to build everything um, so yeah I walk you through that entire process um, whatever you want to render in I show you like um, how do you do it in, in ZBrush if you just want to do it in ZBrush you can do it in ZBrush uh, but I'm using Keyshot just to get a more kind of like realistic type of um, image but you know you can do it in Marmoset, Blender, um, Maverick, whatever you use so that's all you need really as long as you have if you just go we start in three days if you go here uh, it tells you what the workshop is about so all you need is the full version of ZBrush the latest version of ZBrush a render engine anything that you want and, uh, and Photoshop for the last part of the workshop um, or Affinity, Krita anything that you want to just um, composite so again just go to 3D, 3dconceptartist.com. That's the link that I put in, in the in the chat, and it's the first thing that you'll see there. Is this thing here, and that's it. You just register. But again, I just wanna double, you know, reiterate. If you're already part of the email list, if you get my tips, you don't have to do this. I, I'll I'll send you the the link straight away, or you can. It's up to you. I mean, it's just doubling up, <laughs> but but you will you will get them. Anyway, so the other thing that I was going to mention when um, uh, I forgot, when Ray man, um, talked about the, the UCG, if you go again to the 3D Concept Artists, there is this course here called the Ultimate Seabridge Guide Course. This is the one that um, Ray was talking about. It's a, a comprehensive course. Uh, it's right now it's it's closed, but 
if you just join the, the waiting list, next time that I open it, you will get a notification. And basically it covers everything from the from the from scratch basically. So um, we create a character like this, everything in ZBrush from from nothing, from like learning the, the pure basics of how to navigate ZBrush all the way to compositing. So you can just check out all the you know the modules, what we cover, everything is in there. Um, again, it's it's currently closed, so you just need to join the waiting list, and then I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, it's um it's a pretty in-depth course, and I am 100% confident. And now that I see the results of the current students in the UCG, I'm confident that it's um you know it it's it's all you need to get started with Zeroch and and have a, a very confident level when you finish the course on on working with Zeroch to do whatever you want. All right, so the other thing that I want to show you is um, go to the Zero Central right now and have a look at this first um, first one in the top row section that is going to the top row. So this is Daniela Colombo, one of my students of another course that I have called it the Extra Mile. Um, and I just want to do, uh, do a plug because this is a project that he's been working for, uh, you know, on and off, obviously, uh, for a year in the course and it's absolutely fantastic. So just click on that one. This is the, this is the, the the kind of work that the students are producing in the extra mile and it's just blow my mind um, that they have um, you know achieved things like this it's, it's amazing so um, yeah just have a look at this just wanted to to let you know um, this is Daniela Colombo and check his art station give, give his give this guy some love um, it's amazing work so he's done um, everything using the workflow in the course and using the the software that I recommend so for example the renders is um, the render is done in Maverick, uh, Maverick render. This is a render that we use in the, um, one of the renders that I, that I use in the course. Um, so it is absolutely fantastic. So look at that. I mean, not only the, not only the, the, crash, the craftsmanship and the development of the piece technically and all of that is great, but it's also very evocative. And you know, the fact that it has, it managed to, to have an expression in the skull which is, yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you that I'm really uh, amazed by the by the re end result of that project, and just wanted to give it a plug there for the extra mile um, work that the guys are doing. All right, so uh, let's go back to this <laughs> this guy quickly. I'll go back to the to the questions in just a second. Just wanna do a bit more than just talking. All right, so. Now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of things for the fingers. So I'm gonna take the arm, I'm gonna duplicate that, and there's gonna be essentially the, the finger. So I'm gonna put it. I tend to work on the on the left hand side or well the right hand side of the character and then just mirror and weld. And we probably need to duplicate the head as well. And the head is just gonna be the the actual hand. But my point at this at this stage really is that everything that I'm doing is super simple with with very blocky pieces. As you can see, it's just duplicating um a sphere that we tweaked slightly. Again. Okay, um, so I want to move the pivot point to the beginning of the finger. So holding the Alt key and moving the gizmo so that I can do these things from this point. But if I were, you know, if I were to send this for, um, to a rig or something, someone that's going to rig this, I'll just probably leave it like that. All right, and uh, we can duplicate this, or we can just hold control and drag. I'm gonna spread them apart a little bit. It's gonna have three fingers. Right. And obviously the thumb, same deal.
yeah, I think that's that's enough. Again, I'm focusing purely on the silhouette proportions, how everything looks uh, together. I'm going to clear the mask. Um, but now that I look at this, I think it might be a little bit too long, but for now it's, it's just fine. So I'm going to take the the hand, I'm going to do the same thing, just mirror and weld that, and the same thing for the fingers on the other side, mirror and weld. And I think we're getting there to start the tweaking of this um, in Dynamesh, right? I'm also going to do something right now with booleans, I think. Um, let me just think about it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, let's do something with booleans. So I want to have the mouth open again. So if I were to rig it, uh, like I would do something like this. Um, so if, if I open the mouth or have like a mouth open, that's it's going to be easier to close it later, basically. So I'm going to merge or not merge. I'm going to put everything in a folder. Let's call, you know, the usual OR for those of you who are new to this. Um, these sessions OR just means original. <laughs> I'm just like used to create a folder called OR uh, where I know that the originals are in. And I'm gonna also add a, you know what, we can just reuse, we can reuse the, the sphere. So I'm gonna duplicate that and put it down at the bottom. And this is gonna be just a piece that I'm gonna use to subtract an area, an area here for the for the mouth, and it's gonna be quite a big mouth. It's gonna be something like that. And obviously, we can tweak things uh, later. But I'm gonna bring in the taper deformer and try to make it more like a give it a give it a shape. Uh, but this is a cool technique because you can manipulate. A, a primitive as a shape to subtract something else. So with booleans, um, now what I can just do is turn this into a boolean. So take this icon. So by default, everything that you add is adding. Uh, the second icon here on the subtool list is subtracting, and the third one is intersecting. So if I click on this, nothing will happen because I don't have live booleans enabled. So I have it here in my UI at the bottom, but you can just go to render. Uh, render booleans and enable it here. It's the same switch I have. So as, as soon as I do that, I can see straight away what the effect of that boolean piece is. So the reason I'm saying it's so helpful is because you can bring in a gizmo, right? And I can tweak, so I can make it, you know, say hello. Um, but I can determine the, the thickness and or how open the mouth is going to be. So I'm just gonna do something like that. That's plenty for what I need. Alright, so oops. Um the next one would be to boolean this out. So actually apply the boolean. So what Sirius is going to do is take everything that we have in here and it's gonna merge them together and remove any any intersecting polygons that are inside. So it's gonna be a watertight um continuous topology. Alright, so I'm gonna click on this gear icon, click on merge, uh not merge, sorry. Boolean folder. If this Boolean folder with a DSD, it just means uh, subdivision level, but at the moment I don't have anything. Mm, you know what? We could do. Uh, we could do that, but. Uh, yeah, let me just show you. So I'm going to turn this off. Uh, so the subdivision level just means that, for example, the, the head is quite. Um, you know, quite smooth compared to the other pieces. So I can just take this piece and go to geometry, so dynamic subdivision, click on dynamic, right? And just enable that. And this is going to basically give it a bit of a smoothness to the whole thing, right? Um, you know, which is, it could work. Uh, so if I do that, 
if I have pieces, even if it's just one piece with subdivision, then I would use this uh, Boolean width subdivision. Uh, so that Silver takes that into account because um, the subdivision, the dynamic subdivision is just a preview. So if you don't, if you, if you at the moment I have this dynamic subdivision, if you click Boolean folder, it's just going to Boolean everything. It's going to ignore the preview of that dynamic. So if you click on this one, it's going to take that into account. And that's it. So now we have the original folder. That's why I call it the OR. OR. <laughs> um, it's hidden and it produces a single piece, single mesh that now we can start working with, right? Uh, which is fantastic. Now, at this point, what you can do, because you have multiple um, polygroups, and that's another great idea or another great thing about the, um, the Boolean operation and the fact that you blocked everything out with different uh, pieces, is that you have polygroups, so it's going to be really easy to do a, a series measure, right? So we might do that. Um, I can show you both approaches again. So I want to duplicate that one, keep it here just in case. Uh, let me just go through the questions because I just see a few of them popping out. Um, uh, can I have a question to make a male character in series and I separated head with the body to have more geometry for details? I just edges of both subtools are, are creased and no gaps, but when I press BPR, oops, that's the end of the question. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what what the question was. Oh, gaps are visible. When you press BPR, gaps are visible. Hmm. You mean between the subtools are visible? I would have to have a look at, I mean, it's a very specific question. I will have to, I will have to have a look, so sorry, don't have any, any answer. It shouldn't, it shouldn't, but if you subdivide, do, do you get like gaps as well? Not sure if that's the question, sorry. Um, Pablo, you're not talking about uh, in the course. Got advice from the course. Um, oh, so you mean Daniele? The, Kind of like the the fur coat that he did he did in his creature, um, yeah. So we don't talk about. I mean, it's not that we don't talk about it in the course. It's just it's not part of the core modules of the course. So whether or not you know how to deal with fur is irrelevant to the course and to the you know to the to the workflow. Um, but because we do um, we do these live sessions often, so tomorrow we have one. Um, uh, we do it's kind of like q and a's so sometimes we talk about that and if any anyone is interested in a particular project that has fur or whatever else um we'll discuss that in the in the in the q and a's in the live q and a's so and all of those are recorded and we have like an archive of those and we've talked about fur and you know hair cards or um yeah real time hair that sort of thing in previous ones so we have like four or five extra le well I will say four extra lessons on fur and that sort of thing, um, and also the one of the bonuses of the course when they joined last time was the um, the fiber mesh brushes that I have. Uh, so, you know, there are certain things that are not necessarily part of the core modules of the course, but they're in there, and we've discussed this, and 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 that's how you know they managed to to do all of those things as well. Um, you're using Dynamesh? No, at the moment I'm using just simple geometry to produce this, and now this is a Boolean mesh. So if I hide this, go into double, um, you'll see it's, it's perfectly, like it's a continuous topology. Uh, we just have like some weird triangles in the intersection points, but we're going to fix that in just a second. Uh, where is the thumbnail view? Thumbnail view is, uh, where is it located? It's in preferences thumbnail and is this one right here I have it here in my in my UI as well as the cam view I use the thumbnail all the time uh, it's just that for the um, for the purpose of this live session if I put it there kind of go like I don't know it clashes with the with the chat so but I use it all the time yeah uh, 
uh, is rematch by union useful when the mesh has already details? Uh, again, it depends, um, Alex. So, yeah, I mean, it's useful if you don't want to, um, like, if you already have details in the head or in the body or whatever, and you just want to combine something, it's useful, but just keep in mind that that will give you a new topology. So, if you have details, um, uh, and it wouldn't work with uh, with the normal subdivision approach. So if you have subdivision levels, it won't work. So it it, it really depends. It's, it's more something to do um, to go at this stage or to do at this stage. So if I merge everything together in this folder and then I do remesh by union, it's basically the same thing as what I did uh, from the from the folder, really. All right, um, David, uh, David, sorry, uh, between subtools, oh, you're talking about the project. Yeah, like I said, that's a very specific question. Um, I don't really have an answer for you. I'll have to look at what's uh, what's going on, so I'm sorry. Um, you can look at the, the render properties, maybe it's something to do with the BPR. If you're not getting any anything, uh, just check that in the render properties you have, um, maybe you can turn on, I don't know if you have uh, HD geometry, you will have to enable if you want to see that. Um, another thing, just from the top of my head, is to smooth normals. So, rent if depending on how much topology you have, you might need to smooth normals. I don't know. Again, it's it's a very specific thing, so I don't know what else <laughs> um, I could help you with without looking at the issue. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a zero measure for this guy, just like as it is. So let's go to zero measure. Click on zero mesh. I haven't touched anything, um, and most of the time this is what I do. Sometimes I do have an idea of what I want, and I've done this process many times over, so I kind of have an idea of what to expect depending on how I set it up. But just to give you an idea, if you just go ahead and click zero mesh, and it gives you a result that you're not happy with, this is pretty decent for a quick zero mesh, but you can control it a lot more, right? So look at this; it's pretty decent. You have like really nice set of loops, and everything's gonna be um, everything's gonna work fine. Um, it's just that you can control it a little bit more. So if and I didn't use symmetry by the way. So if I undo this, use symmetry. Let's do the same thing. We're gonna get something slightly different. Obviously, the character is not symmetrical at this point, but the serial measure will should approach it in a symmetrical way anyway. So even though we we don't have a a leg, the rest. It, like I said, it's going to be symmetric. So that is the reason I only <laughs> use one one leg. Um, it wouldn't make any difference if there is a gap at all. But look how clean this is, right? So I'm gonna keep both, just to give you an idea. And we have plenty of loops here around the mouth as well, um, you know, to be able to close it. So I'm gonna duplicate that one. Um, and go back to the one we just did that. And I'm going to undo that. And this time I'm going to do the same thing, exactly the same deal, but I'm going to click on half just to have less polygons. And I'm going to click on keep groups. And I'm going to turn the smooth groups to zero. Right? Uh, the smooth groups is basically going to look at the difference between polygroups. Let's turn to a different material. So this line in here. Um, it's going to look at this line and it's going to smooth that out before it applies uh, the, the serial mesh operation. Uh, right now, if I go ahead and hold the shift key and smooth all of this, just to give you an idea, turn off the line. Um, hopefully you can see that it. it's not very visible, but that line that was created with the booleans is very jagged, it's very irregular. So that's what these smooth groups is doing. But because we use booleans, so if I undo that, we have a pretty clean mesh or a pretty clean line, even though the points are sort of like squished together. Uh, so we don't use, we don't have to use these smooth groups. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave adapt on. See what that gives us with symmetry as well. The only thing is we might have this there might be a problem with the with the wrist now that I look at it. 
yeah anyway it's a pretty pretty decent um i think it's i think it's not too bad i was just going to combine uh these two polygroups but i think it's pretty pretty decent all right so we could we could just keep lowering it by leaving the half and then just do super mesh again keeping groups so just to see if it, we can lower the the amount um just to make it easy to work with we can keep doing that um but this is where i can start to see some you know there might be some issues with the with the wrist and i'll do one more time but i do like this one and we're starting to lose some no that's pretty cool yeah so something else we can do during this process is let's say undo this at this point uh, bring in the smooth brush and I want to smooth this out a little bit just so that it's not as yeah strong so it's, it's all about like just helping the Siri measure do do its thing Same thing here. Just want to smooth that out. But I want to maintain, I don't want to do it too, I don't want to exaggerate, I want to maintain that sort of tubular shape. Right, so I think that's that's good. All right, so all I'm doing here is just going to, you know, smooth these things uh, bit by bit. So it's slightly different from what we had before, but uh, the reason I did that is so that I can remove these polygroups. So I can, or not remove, but combine. So I can take this one and combine it with the legs, for example. Um, so that could be something, or I could just, you know, be more careful about how I smooth this, or maybe, maybe even just move this down with a move brush. So I, I don't want to have this line or this loop like here. Uh, so if I just push this down, even though I'm stretching these these polygons here, what I really want is to have something that the serial measure is going to understand a little bit better. And again, it's, it's an automated process and it's fantastic, but you can always give it a hand. So that's what I'm doing really. Just trying to to tell or to help the, the Siri measure what to do. All right, so with those tweaks, let's see if we get something a bit more like a softer version and more organic. Um, Not too bad, but not sure if I like these points in here. It's not bad. Yeah, still it's not bad. Let's do one more time. Uh, this might be problematic. Let's undo it. Do it one more time. And if you don't like the result, really, all you have to do, I mean, this is not going to be animated or anything, just trying to give you some tips. Um, you can click on Legacy, click on Serial Measure, and that's just going to give you a more, uh, I would say, in my in my experience when testing these type of things, it's going to give you a more, um, it's going to be a, a, a better result for organic shapes, right? 
So you, these loops are a little bit better. They're not ideal for animation, but they're, they're better. Um, so maybe something we can do is to actually combine these two together. So now we're going to have a, a, we don't have to maintain that weird line. And now we have a, a nice loop around it, around the mouth. All right, so this guy is looking good. I'm just going to bring in my move brush with the Aki curve and start tweaking the, the volumes and the shapes maybe without, with perspective on. Something froze there. All right, so I think I'm going to give this guy a belly. Uh, but, you know, we can start using something like maybe the clay brush. Um, when you use something like the clay, whoops, the clay brush, with a lower intensity um, and you have um, a low resolution mesh like this, it's actually really good because it's not going to, it's not going to be visible, those kind of like lines that you would see if you have a lot of um, topology. So the clay brush actually is just a, a very simple control way to, to tweak volumes like this. And then obviously with the move brush, but and the smooth brush, sorry. All right. I think I'm gonna tweak the f the head a little bit. It's it's getting out of that sort of tubular shape that I wanted to to go for. It's kind of like a peanut now. All right. I'm gonna do quick save as well. All right, so I'm going to start tweaking the, the mouth area. And I'm not sure what, I mean, it's going to be kind of like a happy guy. But like a bit evil. Not sure, not sure yet what we can do with this guy, but um, that's that's plenty. Um, I like the the hands. Oh, they're looking very chubby. The topology on this finger is not great or around this area, but again, shouldn't be a big issue. Oh, it's because there was a, a weird polygroup there. Mm. Yeah, didn't see that. Let's see if we can fix that. without going back. All right, so these are the polygroups. I'm gonna polygroup that. And I'm gonna take the half of, just go with same. Let's see what happens. Now we're losing a little bit of that shape. Mm. Not a big deal. I mean, it's just an extra point in here, but shouldn't be a problem for the posing anyway. Um, that's the only thing. I mean, you can go ahead and, and fix it and even use like C model or something like that. Um, but I just don't want, don't want to go back too much so that we can move on to the next the next phase of this. All right, so let's add some extra stuff or extra sub tools so that we 
start to get um, a feeling of what this guy is going to actually look like. So I'm gonna add a cylinder for the um, for the teeth, and it's going to solo mode. I'm gonna concentrate on the on the teeth for the for the time being. So I'm gonna hold the Control and Shift. I'm gonna hide half of this. So it's basically a single-sided polygon, right? And I'm gonna also just remove uh, something like that and delete hidden. So we have this single-sided mesh. This is gonna be literally uh, like a like like a single tooth, basically. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna make it like a like a devil type of thing. All right. So uh, for this, again. We can go ahead and bring the C modeler, right click on face, make sure that Q mesh selected, polygroup all, click and drag, and that's just gonna give us that thickness for for the teeth. That's basically it. I'm done wanna make it too thick, just like that. Um and then if I wanna do some some fangs or something, um maybe I'll do it after I position it so I know exactly where it should be. So let's bring in everything. I'm gonna scale this down. All right, so here you go. That's gonna be the the upper teeth. And then we just obviously tweak the, the mouth, but I think I think it works. You can flatten it a little bit. Uh, so now that it's in the place that I wanted to, um, we can go ahead and add some fangs. So I think in this side, let's see, one on each side. Here should be fine. Um, yeah, so solo mode. I'm going to hold the Alt key and I'm going to tag this polygon, not that one, this polygon. And I'm going to extrude this like so. It's gonna be subtle, don't wanna make it too weird. Um, and I'm gonna right click on this face and we can do a few things. We can merge everything together so that it's just like very pointy. Um, all I wanna do really, because I'm gonna retopologize that or I could if I wanted to, uh, it's go to the scale scale here, just below Q mesh. Uh, single polygon or polygroup all, we can tag holding the old key, click and drag. And okay, this in this case, the modifiers, so it's asking to to scale everything from the mesh center, so it's taking into account the entire volume. Um, or we can just click on center and do this. So there's different ways that you can manipulate things based on the modifiers. So because I have the scale selected and this polygroup all or whatever I select here, uh, you can scale based on the axis, the polygon center, the local symmetry, the click center. So it's the click center is when you, wherever you clicked exactly. Um, which is fine. And I'm just gonna take the move brush, actually gonna mask this, invert the mask, and I'm gonna push this forward a bit. And I'm gonna enable dynamic subdivision just to see how that looks. That's that's all I wanted to, really. Right, so that's that's that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that and just simply rotate it around. So 180 degrees, push it down. Rotate it slightly, maybe make it smaller. And then just push it back. Um, I'm not sure if I like this as um you know what? Let's do something else. Let's just push it down as it is and then rotate it that way. So we don't have the, the fangs and they will be hidden anyway, so it doesn't matter. All 
Alrighty. Um, cool. So we started to get something going. It's a little bit better. I'm gonna select this guy and just push the bottom lips up a bit more. <laughs> so remember that I said that this guy is gonna be Cupid or some kind of version of Cupid. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if we get there. Because right now it's just like a little devil, but it will be hopefully what I meant. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, if you want to see this as well, like subdivided like the the teeth, I can also enable dynamic, and uh, we're still playing with with low geometry, with low resolution in the geometry, uh, but it looks a lot smoother. Let's just add some bump here. So this is what I meant. Um, I should have explained this better, but uh, using the the clay brush with, let's say, a low resolution mesh like I have here, but with dynamic resolution, you can see how easy it is to tweak volumes um, and maintain everything clean. Because you can just do a bit of clay brush or clay tubes, whatever you want, and then just do um, just the smooth brush. Because ultimately, what you're moving is just a few polygons, and series is just giving you that preview that looks nicer but it's very simple all right cool so this guy's looking all right um i i have a feeling that this looks like this a game that was quite popular recently i can't remember i don't I haven't played games for ages but looks like one of those things that i've seen one of those um it was quite popular during lockdown don't know if you probably know what i'm talking about um, let me do a quick save and check some questions. Uh, you just joined the five day challenge. Awesome. And I've got a hold on how to use the C model too. Oh, Among Us. Yes, that's right. That's the one that I was thinking of. So it's going to be kind of like that, but you know, we're going to give him eyes and everything. It's going to be slightly different. Just, you know, the general shape, I think it could be one of those uh, among us. Um, yeah, the sim, the sim modeler menu is, is fantastic. Once you get to, to, to use it multiple times and you kind of like get the hang of it. Um, I have in the, in the ultimate series guide course, the you know the beginners course for Sea I have uh, almost like an entire module dedicated to things with the C modeler, um, and I show heaps of the techniques. But I start from like the very very basics of it, and again everything in the course is kind of like building up from from you know specific things that um, in a way I don't get to the C modeler until I cover other things, so that when you get to the C modeler things make a lot of sense. Um, but I, I know for like you know, it could be frustrating the, the first time that you see it. Okay, so, um, well, I think I was gonna give it some eyes. So, let's append sphere. Squish it down. Gonna go into solo mode and just give this eye some better shape. So I think using the taper, I use the taper the form for a lot of different things. And we can also give it some curvature maybe using the bend arc that way and that way. Just so the it fits within the roughly with the curvature of the of the face a bit better. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do mirror and weld now. Go into symmetry, enable local symmetry so that I when I scale. So let me just show you. 
I've, I've shown these things before, but um, without local symmetry, when I have two pieces of the same subtool and I'm using sim uh, symmetry, if I do this to scale it, it will do it based on the center axis of uh, the world. If you enable local symmetry, for you guys should be in the transform palette, local symmetry, L symmetry. Uh, once it's enabled, you can just do this and it will take into account the center piece, like the, the volume or the, the center of the pivot of that volume, um, regardless if you have symmetry or not. So this is just a, a quick way to figure out what's the, you know, I think if you spread the eyes apart, it makes it a little bit more quirky and interesting. Um, yeah, and these are the type of things that just show you so if you have something like this and you put it closer together it's gonna to be more like a cute character if you pull the the eyes apart it's gonna be more like weird <laughs> and quirky so that's part of what I'm trying to figure out like what is the the right distance um, if you put it just kind of like a you know having a an even distance between the sides of the head and in the center so you have this gap is the same as this gap and the same as this gap then it's it looks all right but it doesn't have that much character so i like to push that a little bit and have something a bit more you know consistent maybe just on top of the the fangs for example so it, it all uh, it's all about the the design of the or how you you know use these things to to um give some appeal to your character, I suppose. All right. So I pushed it too much. I'm gonna go to the to my body. I'm gonna duplicate it just in case. Um, and I'm gonna use the move brush with AccuCurve when I start pushing oops, this one in. maybe using the standard brush. Let me turn on dynamic so I can see what I'm doing in the in the low res mesh. All right, cool. So that's <laughs> that's about the basics of it. Um, that just took a, about an hour doing this um, this thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh no, um, Silver's crashing you. Um, don't worry. If you haven't been saved and you have the quick save enable. Just check the quick save folder. Should be should be right. Um, there's only a couple of times in the whole time that I've been using Zbrush that Zbrush crashes, and I cannot recover. So usually you get you get pretty close to where you were before. So just check the quick start um, the quick save. Uh, what about um, if you put them as close as possible to get a cyclone feel? <laughs> yeah, I could try that. Uh, what tablet do I do I use? I have the uh, Zbrush Cintiq Touch Pro 24 inch. That's the one that I'm using. But I do I do use all the tablets as well. I mean, other um, like the Intuos Pro, depending on where I am. All right, so um, I just want to give this guy a bit more character in terms of, you know, um, body features or face features. So I want to give it a kind of like, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I'm just going to just do it. I'm just giving some ears like for, um, what's the name of this? I, I, I completely blacked out, um, blanked out. I cannot remember. So I'm just going to give it some ears and some horns. Super simple shapes as well. 
and this these are things that can be used or can be separate or keep separate from the actual mesh or from the you know if you're thinking about topology that's what i'm what i meant uh, so in this cylinder i'm going to use the tape of the format to push this down like so and then tweak that curvature that's going to be one of the horns and i'm just going to use the bend arc as well and turn on dynamic yep that looks all right And again, this is the same idea with the with the eyes. Like it, it would make a difference where you place things. Oops. Mirror and weld enable local symmetry and symmetry, of course. So it makes a, a difference whether you you know do let's say this and put it here, right? Uh, which I kind of like because they're they're ears. But so I'm gonna reposition these depending on you know this almost like a bow top of the head. So I'm gonna place it here for the time being i kind of like that uh, but then i'm going to use the um, i'm going to add the the ears that i was talking about and then based on that um, i can reposition them and that's what i keep them uh, separate so let's go ahead and append a cylinder so this is going to be a slightly different trick that hopefully you'll find useful it's going to be pretty cool so i sometimes use simple geometry like this not just to block things uh, that I can, let's say, for example, if this was going to be, I don't know, uh, <laughs> a cylindrical shape or, or a tube like the like the arm or the leg, I can start with this. I can do the process that I've been showing you, you know, retopologize with zero mesh or just DynaMesh, tweak it, blah, 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 uh, starting from that. But sometimes I also use the uh, primitive shapes like this to as, as a base to extract something from it that, ha um, that sort of conforms to the you know the volumes so in this case um, let me just show you the the idea because I think it's quite quite useful so I'm gonna bring in a uh, where is my epic pen here we go cool so this is gonna be a pretty cool thing. So if you haven't used this sort of strategy, it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, yes, so let's just use that. So we have this cylindrical shape, but this is not what we're gonna end up with. We're gonna literally trace, I don't know, something like this, like a leaf shape, right? So it just goes here around like that. So hopefully you mean, you know what I mean. So it's it's gonna be if you look at it from the front, it's gonna be like that. If you look at it from the top, it's gonna be like that, right? Um, and if you look at it from like an angle, it's gonna be like this, roughly. So this is kind of like the back. Um, so the the idea is that you can just do that very easily with a a primitive shape that you conform to that area and then you can extract this piece using the the masking tools to extract it um not the masking tool sorry the extract tool after you mask it or you can just um cut it in pieces there's many different ways to approach it but the principle is the same you just want to use a base to to generate that shape and then um you know tweak it later so i'm going to show you one that will give you a control base for then you're doing um so you can do um it's like a series measure thing so like i said these are there are many ways to do this so i can literally just do that let's just give it a couple more subdivision levels delete lower this is just a dummy file by the way so if i do this kind of like what i show you before right maybe exaggerate it a bit more um, i can literally just go to the extract area here click on extract um, let's just go accept and then we have that mesh right with that shape uh, but that's 
you know, you can do that obviously better than what I just did. But I'm going to show you a different one. Probably need to scale this a bit more. All right. So the this other alternative method of doing this is using polygroups, um, but also we can use the masking brushes. So what I'll do is I'm going to switch to the mask lasso. So it gives me this sort of thing. <clears throat> um, if you if you're getting a, a mask that is very very low res, you just need to increase. So I can just increase the subdivision level. That's about it. And I'm going to use masking uh, with symmetry. So I can just go ahead and do this. Did it do it with masking? Oh, I was looking at it from a different angle. There we go. So. Right. Um, the other the other thing is when I rotate around, I need to make sure we clean the areas because uh, when you use the mask lasso, you actually you're kind of like projecting the mask in a way. Um, we can also use the mask pen. If you want to just do some subtle tweaks, you can hold the Alt key, so Control and Alt to invert, kind of like what you're masking. So painting back. like that and this is just to refine that mask alrighty I think that's fine cool so again this is a more um, a more refined mask so you can go ahead and do what I showed you using the extract or um, you can just go ahead and group these masks so you can just hold control on W which is the same thing as I have here so well let's just do it with control W so that gives it a different polygroup right um, and now this is all we need we don't need the the other piece of the um, of the puzzle <laughs> which is the, the cylinder so if I hold control and shift and click on it and invert it I can go ahead and delete hidden, right? So that cylinder is gone, but we have this this shape. And the way that we can control these sort of jagged edges is by smoothing by groups. So we can go to the deformation palette. I have it here in my custom UI, but because uh, I use it all the time. But if you go to deformation, um, where is it? Uh, polish by groups. So if you do that, it should polish. Let me undo that. Let's show you closer. So polish by groups gives you that, you know, very, you know, maintains the, the volume and focuses on the edges of the groups. In this case, it's just one, but it does it pretty well. So I'm doing this a few times to get something very clean. Right. And at this point, you can just use the move brush, you know, to do tweaks like this. And remember, this is going to be kind of like the, the ear shape. Um, or the character. I'm doing just little nudges here with a move brush. Um, we can also, in fact, just bring in the gizmo. Taper again. I use taper all the time. Taper this like so. Maybe tweak the, the curvature a bit. All right. Yeah, and I think that's fine. Um, maybe just give it a bit more subtle, um, like an arc in here. Oops, I am not using symmetry. <laughs> uh, but again, this is just a, a sketch, essentially, so I can just do mirror and well and get that going again. Make sure symmetry is enabled. All right. So let's say that we are happy with this. I'm going to do just uh, polish by groups just in case. And this is pretty dense. So the next step would be kind of like what we did before. Uh, so 
where is it? Uh, serial mesh. I'm um, just gonna make sure symmetry is enabled. Have uh, you can use have or adapt. Um, in this case, there's no many gaps or many kind of like indentations, so adapt doesn't really matter unless you want to have more um, edge loops around the. Let's just keep it just so that you have more edge loops around the the edges. Um, or you can instead of using have, you can have a target poly count. So I'm going to set it to 1,000 polygons, for example. Uh, this is in the thousand, so one is 1,000. And let's just do zero measure. That's it. All right. So I'm going to turn that into half again. So I'm going to have 1,000 or 2,000 polygons. I'm going to do remeshing. Maybe enable legacy. And we get in there. Just need to tweak this with the move brush. Smooth things out a bit. And let's do it one more time. That's much better. Cool. So we have a nice piece of topology from that cylinder that of course we extracted um, and we can give it a bit of thickness using the C-modeler. I mean at this point you know with the new version of C-brush, the latest version, um, you don't really need to do that. I prefer to have like real geometry in this case but sometimes you can just use the um, dynamics of the vision with thickness. So I'll show you. You can just enable dynamic right and you can use this thickness and determine what thickness you want for that for that ear right and of course you can smooth that in fact let's just use that so that you know it's cool um so yeah i'm gonna smooth this and then once you're happy you can just apply that and you would keep that thickness which is awesome all right let's do let's get out of solo let's quick save just in case Oh, this is cool. Kind of look doing like a mask. Mm. Anyway, that's uh, that's maybe for another character. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna go to the move brush, bring in the gizmo, scale it down, rotate it. Obviously, uh, so this is part of the reason. Anyway, so because of the size. Determine the thickness with this is just gonna be based on that size. So you know what? Um, I'm gonna set it to offset to a hundred so that it is basically extruding. I don't know if you saw the difference in there. So I had it at zero, I think, or minus. Can't remember. Anyway, setting it to a to a hundred is going to take the if this is the surface positive offset or like a hundred percent is going to take that single sided polygon which is what we have and is gonna create this thickness based on the the positive values of the normal so it's gonna extrude it like this that thickness if it's in minus it's gonna be the opposite so it's gonna be negative values um, so in this case I think this one works better um, Probably need to scale it down a bit more. All right. Now it's just a matter of figuring out whether the the volumes and everything else is working fine. We can, you know, use the bend arc as well. And just use the move brush really because we have a pretty low res mesh really everything else that we're doing is just um, dynamically created in the spot so yeah it's kind of like a cow <laughs> um, I thought this was gonna be more interesting not sure if I like it um, you know what I'll do I'm going to duplicate it. I think the shape is fine. It's just maybe the position could be be better. Be more like this. All 
I'm going to turn this one off. Let's see. Yeah, I think more like a little devil type of thing. It's better. So this is the type of things that is really good to do as you design um, or, you know, you're defining what the character should look like. And really, this is one of the reasons I love um, I love Zeroes for designing in 3D because it allows me to do this this sort of thing like super quickly. All right, so I think that's looking better. Maybe from the top. Let's push it back a bit. All right. So let's have a look. So if I mirror and mirror and weld this without local symmetry, obviously. Um. Yeah. So we can go ahead and do the same trick. Just scale things up and down. And this is what I meant about waiting until you have these pieces, for example, to uh, to decide what to do with the with the horns. So I'm gonna exaggerate things a bit more. This guy's pretty, you know, pretty out there in proportions. So might as well, All right? Um, cool. So I have the other one. Just gonna drop it into the original folders. In fact, let's just clean this up a bit. And the horns. Let's just place them. A bit better. And you, you know what? I think we can change the rotation just to balance things out a bit. I don't know. At this point, I, I just have the kind of like the pieces, really. So I'm just playing around with the, you know, the placement and the size of things, just to to work around the figuring out the design, really. But I already have the pieces. All right, so we have this guy ready to go. Um, how are we doing with time? We still have an hour, so let's um. Let's take these ones, go to dynamic, um, yeah, that's fine, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the smoothness, so it's like pretty blocky, but so I can see exactly what the thickness is, and that way I can just apply the thickness on its own and then I can apply the dynamic or enable dynamic. So in other words, right now we have just a single sided mesh, right? This is this is the real geometry that we have. The thickness is being applied dynamically um, with the dy dy dynamics of division and the thickness. And we can also obviously add smoothness, right? But what I want to do is actually create the exact mesh that I can see right now, which is just a preview and then subdivide it. So I'm going to apply, so subdivision, the smoothness subdivision to zero, so no subdivision levels and the thickness I like. So let's click apply, and now this is the actual mesh, so I can just smooth this whole thing if I wanted to, right? Uh, but now that I have this mesh like this, I can go ahead and do dynamic, turn off thickness, obviously, and this time just enable the smoothness, so I get a, I'm going to get a, a smoother version of it, just slightly. And if I wanted to, I can also smooth myself like this, right? Uh, but in fact, we can go ahead and use the C modeler, for example. And I'm going to right click, bevel. I don't know if this is going to do what I want, but just to add a tiny bit more of roundness in there. Yeah, so it's just a, a bit softer. Go 
Cool. Alrighty. Um, I'll have a look at the chat in just a second. Um, but I think we're getting getting somewhere with this Cupid <laughs> version. Uh, so far, it doesn't give you any hint that it's Cupid. But as soon as we give them the the arrows and some wings, some you know, we'll we'll make it look like that. I mean, we might not finish it today, um, but we have half an hour, so. I just want to show you a couple more things. Let's do a quick save just in case. Um, to, um, so Fran, hola Pablo, una pregunta, algún tipo de plugin para trabajar en Arnold. So Fran is asking if I use any type of tool or extra plugin to work um, nope I just work with the default things I do have plugins for certain things so I have my plugin for render for compositing well I call it my plugin but it's just the one that um, zero sorry the, that um, zero that um, Joseph Drost actually coded so we work together we collaborated in in this plugin um, called the compositor so the zero compositor so if you want to know more about this one, you can go to the um, to the Silver's Guides. There is a dedicated page, or in fact, if you click on this one, yeah. So this is a, a tutorial that I put together, um, and there's like a guide on how to use this. So if you download it, install it, and click on that Silver's Compositor and click here, it gives you a full intro tutorial on that plugin. Uh, so this is something that doesn't come with Silver's. You can download it; it's free, obviously. Um, you know, and, and this is something that I use for my personal work. So I can just fire this up um, and create a, a nice compositing render work in progress. Uh, it works with Marmoset and with Substance Painter. So, you know, uh, other tool that I use is the one that I mentioned before, c -Rap. So this one is just fantastic to, um, if you already have like a base retopology, so sometimes when I'm working in, in projects and freelance stuff, um, sometimes I've, I've been given a base mesh or something that I have to 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 use because that's the base mesh that you know the the animators are using. It's already rigged or whatever. So I just instead of working on that base, I can just work on a dynamesh object, work on all the details that I want, and then I simply wrap my sketch or my my work into the right topology basically so or vice versa so things like that I use it other than that the rest is just you know custom brushes uh, and I just have tons of custom brushes but all of those are also in the Seabrush um, in the Seabrush Guides website or you know if you go to the Seabrush Guides website store all of those brushes are in there um, so I don't know if that answers the question other than that that's that's it everything out of the box from Seabrush uh, the quick sketch button is just to paint. So if you click on quick sketch, you are basically entering in 2.5D territory in a way. Oh, actually, no, that one is that one, that one is actually 3D, but it allows you to sketch, um, you know, like painting inside ZBrush, like sketching in Photoshop. Uh, provide my ZBrush UI. Um, I I have a bunch of UIs, but you know this one is very particular and it has a bunch of uh, custom macros that wouldn't make sense and wouldn't work for you. So that's the only reason I don't share it. I I've gone through that before uh, on the streams. Um, I'm planning to do the same version that I have here without all the the you know the rubbish that uh, you might not understand what it is. Uh, just because again it's like custom macros and custom things. So I'm gonna remove those and just kind of clean it up and maybe I can share that one. I'm uh, just wondering, I have a w ways to work around this, but if there is a super quick way, for example, to get like a long stick and twist it so it has a lot of twist, twists, uh, loops. Um, well, that's a very specific thing, but I'm not sure. 
I mean, I would just use a cylinder and twist it. <laughs> that's 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 it. I mean, I will show you. It's I, I'm not sure if that's sorry. I'm not sure if that's the the uh, the question. But if you go to a cylinder 3D, you can determine in here. You can determine using the initialize tab. You can say how many you know divisions you want. I'm just gonna random select some numbers. So that gives you the amount of loops and then you can just go uh, make polymesh 3d and scale it and that's your stick I don't know if that's if that's the question um, and then you can just bring in the gizmo and there is a twist deformer so you can just do that you can just twist it around so you know all of those lines are twisted um, and because you use, I don't remember how many I had, but you can enable radial symmetry, for ex for example. And it should work. No, it's not symmetrical. Anyway, um, you can just, if you do it carefully, you can use radial symmetry and um, you will be able to add that. I don't, I don't know if that's the answer to your question that works or that gives you an idea um, quickly cool 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 um, you can also move the horns a little bit yep um, how often do I do these streams uh, for Seabrush? Um every other week so I, I was doing it every week, but um, I have some other projects at the moment that, so so today, um, so the following week, we, we won't have one, but then the next one, there is one, so every other week. So it's the 9th and the 23rd for me. Um, I'm in Australia, so probably for you, if you're in the US or something, it's gonna be 22nd. Um, I always share it on my Instagram, so if you follow me in Instagram, you will get a notification, and I put like a countdown for the time and everything. Cool, no worries. Perfect, glad that it helps. Alrighty, um, cool. So let's um, let's just go ahead and add some poly paint, just to a uh, working poly paint. So I think we've already talked about this in other streams, but I'm just gonna do a quick um, poly paint to it. I'll, I'll call it a, a working poly paint. Just if it's not the the final one, it's just to give me an idea of um where I'm going and just to set some some mood for this devil. So I'm gonna select the character. Let's just fill it with the white color. And same thing for the for the teeth. So I'm just filling with um with colors. All right, so you know, pretty simple, but that sort of unifies the idea <laughs> a little bit. Uh, so I just turned the the standard brush, turning off the uh, lazy mouse, the Z add, and turning on the RGB. Um, very quickly for you guys, um, if you're using the default UI, the Z add and the and the RGB should be at the top, but otherwise in the draw palette here at the top you have those switches, and in the stroke palette you can go to the lazy mouse and turn that off. So those are the things that I have in there. Uh, the only reason I do that as well is just to be able to see the effect faster. And I can also tweak the RGB intensity so it's not as strong. Select the base color and then just add. Um, am I adding the right thing? Oh, I'm not in the body. There we go. Just with a large brush, brush size.
you know, this process for me is kind of like doing exactly the same thing I did with the, the original block out of the character, because um, it's just blocking out the colors, really. So just adding some highlights, you know, kind of like painting and I would say an ambient occlusion in a way, or just painting some, some light to the character. Um, but that's that's really all there is to it. Uh, what I can do also is I'm gonna go into solo mode. Remember we have polygroups, so I can isolate this, mask it out, invert the mask in. Uh, we can grow the mask. So I have tools here to work with masking that I don't usually use um, often. So all my masking tools are in this little thing. This is from the actual um, Wacom that I'm using. So I'm gonna use this to grow the mask. Maybe sharpen it a little bit. Um, maybe just blur it a little bit or shrink it. Yeah. Uh, and those tools are in the masking palette. So for you guys should be on the masking. Um, so this, these tools here to blur the mask, grow it, sharpen it, all of that. I just have them in my own sort of custom palette here. Uh, and that's just a Wacom tool. So I can just take these and basically paint, paint that. There we go. Cool. It's looking pretty cool. Um, maybe just a little bit of darkness around the eyes. Not too much. Just fade it. Uh, you can also use the uh, the smooth brush without um, without the C add to blur colors. I like to use kind of like as much brush to to clear or to is or not to is to clear, but to to fade and to um, yeah to diffuse the, the the transition between colors if you want to. Um, I think for now this is all right. We can go ahead and start with a, you know, let's make it more like a, more of a Cupid guy. So um, let's just give him the, let me think what would be good. Uh, we can start, I know what we can do. All right, so I'm gonna take the body, I'm gonna duplicate that, drop it down the bottom. We have about 20 minutes, so I'm gonna try to do this a, li a little bit faster because uh, we've you know, sort of covered this a bit. Uh, so this is gonna be a dummy file or a dummy object. Go into solo mode. Let's just fill it with just white color. Um, I'm gonna apply the dynamics of division that we currently have. Again, this is going to be just a dummy file. Um, and we can do a couple of things. We can use this as a base to extract something or whatever else, right? I'm just going to show you something else, like another way to go um, to go about it. Hang on. There's something weird in the chat. What's going on? Oh, OK. Uh, could you paint a gradient like black and red, red one in the model? Um, yeah, that's kind of like what I did. There's not like a gradient tool, but you can do that with like a soft brush. Same thing. Uh, what is the type of headset that you use, and is it good? Do you recommend using it? So you mean this headset um, that I'm currently using to to speak to, um, it, it's called, hang on, uh, it's called BPHS2, it's an um, Audio Technica, Audio Technica um, uh, headset, uh, but the, the quality of audio, I mean, it's really good, uh, I think it's meant, it, it was created for broadcasting live, so for like sports and stuff like that, so it masks out a little bit of the, the noise behind it. Um, but the, the quality of audio is not just because of this. It's, I'm also using a Go XLR Mini. So this is plugged into the Go XLR Mini. The Go XLR Mini is, um, is hardware and software in the same device, and it sort of cleans everything. Um, so that's the audio is crisp and clean and without noise because of the two things. So I don't know if that's what 
you're asking. Uh, but most of the time when I'm not recording tutorials or doing live, I have the wireless Sony noise cancelling. So th those ones are my preferred ones for just chilling and doing these with music and stuff. Um, cool. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to use this as a dummy file again, but I'm going to show you a different technique. So I'm going to use a brush called the topology brush. So the topology brush allows you to literally paint the topology you want, whatever you want it. So, um, so if I want to do that sort of thing across that this character is going to carry, I just do this. Just need to get closer to the when I click and drag, it continues the the curve. So you see when I get close, um, it sort of like snaps to it. So that's what I'm looking for. So I can snap and continue like so. Hopefully this is going to work. I mean, I should have unified this ages ago, because um. Sirius likes to work with a particular scale of two by two. This character is actually quite big for um for the current scale. So anyway. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm just gonna draw. But it's literally painting where you want the, the topology to be. Hopefully, it's, I think it's not going to work exactly what I wanted to, but anyway, we'll give it a go. And then once you have those initial loops, then you can just go across and that is going to create the other loops. So yeah, it's not going to work. Just realize. Um, we'll, we'll give it a go. It might work, it might not. just because of the size of the brushes. Uh, but basically what I'm doing is just determine my resolution or the loops that I want. Just going through like this. Oops. Uh, just make sure that when you're doing this, you're actually crossing the two other lines. You can have more lines, by the way. You can have three. I just want to keep it simple. But whatever you want to do, you need to make sure that yeah, you cross it. So once you have this ready, hopefully it's going to work. Um, you can click outside the mesh or any other part of the mesh. And that's just going to produce, well, <laughs> that should have produced that. That's what I said. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, oh, OK. Hang on. I have subdivisions. So let's delete subdivisions. Let's try that again. There we go. Forgot I forgot that I applied the subdivision level, but I didn't delete the, the subdivision. So now this is like super clean, except this area, but we can fix that with Simulat really easy. Um, yeah, so basically what we can do now is go to the split subtop, um, click on mask, sorry, uh, click on split on mask points. And I'm gonna delete this dummy file now, or this dummy, body and now I have this piece that conforms nicely to the body it has a really nice topology uh, we can tweak it a little bit and let's just go ahead and fix this one with the similar so the fix for this is extremely easy we just with the similar selector hold the alt key to tag that and that one right click delete and that's done and just to merge this we can just right click on an edge go to bridge and we can have two options, two holes or two edges. In this case, we want the, the two holes um, to be merged. So two holes and I can just click here and then click here and that's it. Obviously, we can also go ahead and on the geometry palette, you have the, the crease. Everything is creased by default in this one. Um, if you want, you can crease it, but I think I don't want to do that. So I'm going to uncrease all. And let's just tweak these maybe with the with the masking tools. All right. 
Um, and if you want to have the same polygroups, obviously, which is convenient, uh, what we can do is with the C model selected, right click on an edge, go to polygroup, and then you have the option of the, doing the polyloop. So you can click on that and it will assign a polyloop. Poly loop. You can hold the Alt key to change it. Click and hold the Alt key to cycle through different polyloops. And that way you have a clean set of loops, like so. Uh, pretty easy. All right, so we have 10 minutes. I'm gonna try to do the the arrows and the and and a base for the arc, um, for the sorry the arrow the bow <laughs> the arc for the bow. Um, let's use the move brush here. So this is what I meant about unifying anything. So right now, um, I, my draw size is 133 and it's pretty small, and that is like I said, due to this whole thing being too big. Um, so this. There's ways to, to fix it quickly, but maybe I'll show you next time. Just want to get this this guy set up. All right, so again, super simple, but the the simplicity of this is what allows me to to have more control over it, right? So we can go ahead and do dynamic subdivision, for example, right? And obviously we lose a little bit of the the sharpness of this, uh, but we can go to the C modeler and right click on an edge, go insert, and I'm going to insert right in the middle. Or something around there that sharpens things a little bit. Uh, one in the middle here in the center is for consistency, and let's go ahead and right click on this. Go to bevel, and I'm going to click and drag to bevel this. Let's double check that I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, yep, and the same thing inside. So now this is a little bit. Sharper, but not sharp enough. <laughs> or not sharp enough. Um, I mean, what I wanted is something slightly softer. You can achieve the same thing by going to um, the dynamic solution and play with the Q grid, maybe. Uh, but I think this one is just nicer. And maybe add a bit more subdivision so it's smoother. And go back to the move brush. Again, the underlying geometry is still the, the low res mesh we just created so that's what allows me to move these things very easily without making it bumpy and you know all right I'm gonna use the damn standard brush I don't have enough polygons here but I'm gonna try to push this slightly all right so um, in the last five minutes I have, I'm going to polypaint this and I'm going to give it the sort of like the arrows, uh, the arrow things. So, or the sachet, that area would, <laughs> um, that area where you put the, the arrows or where you, you put the arrows. So I'm going to append a uh, cylinder. This one is going to be, oh, let's delete that. Um, this is going to be pretty simple. One thing I should mention though is because I just showed you something before about the, the primitives. So if I go to this 3D cylinder, it's just gonna give me this because that's the, the latest settings and Sirius will remember the settings that I use in the initialize tab. Uh, however, you know, if I go ahead and append that cylinder here, right? It's just gonna be, you know, the same settings that I added before. So I just, change it to the uh, cylinder 3D. If for some reason you cannot get that working or you forgot about it, whatever, uh, you can always go to the C modeler, or oh, sorry, C modeler, the gizmo, oops, click on the gear icon and select it from here. So that will be the same. All right, so this is gonna be a very simple piece of geometry, um, but we can make it interesting. So let's go ahead and delete the top bit, holding Control and Shift and Alt to isolate that. Uh, delete hidden, so we have this empty cylinder. Um, 
gonna go to the CModeler first and add some poly loops or some edge loops here. Oops, right click, insert, click and drag. Um, just about there. So that when we smooth this out, this looks nicer. And bring in the gizmo, go to taper again. I've used taper many times today. You see how much um, I use that. So I'm gonna taper a little bit and more for the the back so a little bit at the top and just a bit more at the bottom and play around with that sort of curvature there cool accept that and we can go to the C modeler now or you know what we can scale it actually it's not gonna be completely cylindrical uh, so I was gonna just with the similar give it some thickness but we can use the same idea as the one we use with the um with the ears we can just enable that at thickness and then we can just place it and then we can just decide whether or not we want that thickness or not So pretty much what we did with other pieces is just figuring out what the bed best place is. So you won't see it really from the from the front. Kind of yeah. I think that's fine. Cool. So I think the thickness is alright. It goes with the with the style maybe just not that much. Right, and then we can use the move brush and tweak this a little bit further. We still have the, the very low res mesh. That's that's why I can very easily tweak these shapes and these forms without worrying too much. Because um, we're moving literally just a few polygons. It's just the dynamics of vision what um, does the trick, really. So with this this type of stylized characters, I do that um, often. All right, so that's it. Let's do. Um, uh, I think we have three minutes left, so we'll do the arrows and and the bow because uh, those ones are kind of like cool to show you all the techniques and all the stuff that we can use. So might as well just leave it for the next one. Um, but let's um, switch to this material. Select that and I'm gonna select something like a brownish color for this. Oops, fill object. Fill object. And there we go. All right? Um that's that's about it for, for today guys. Um let me know if you have any questions so far or anything. Last minute question that I can answer. Uh, we'll we'll do the rest uh, later on. Let's see. Let's do a quick render. Yeah. So this is kind of like the creature type of thing that I wanted to to do. Um, I think I'm gonna give him some wings as well, but the wings would be kind of like floating just just for fun and and the winds would be pretty pretty simple as well um in fact let me just do something quickly <laughs> uh, i'm gonna duplicate the ears which have like a very similar shape anyway i'm gonna smooth them out a bit And you know it's kind of like a a prototype. Don't know if it's gonna work, but like I said, it's a prototype. <laughs> um, that's kind of cool for the ears as well. Uh, we'll look into that later.
I don't know. It could it could be it could be a thing. It could be like um floating you know. <laughs> um yeah, that could be that could be something. I mean, we'll leave it there for the time being. Um we'll decide on on the placement and everything else later on, but that that's I suppose that's a, a good example of reusing some pieces. And we can obviously let's go to the standard brush. Maybe darken this. Yeah. Cool. So let's do a render and we, we wrap it up there. Um, yeah, so I think that looks a little bit better. Um, cool, Gladio. Uh, what is qu Quiver? I think it's called Quiver. Um, maybe it's that that's from a different, uh, different question. Might have missed that one. What is the lattice brush? Brush, lattice brush, the lattice brush. What's the lattice brush? There's no such thing as lattice brush. Unless, yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah, I haven't seen that one. Uh, there's not that, no such thing. Oh, maybe you're referring to. Hang on, you're referring to this, oh, man. to the lattice. Um, no, this is not a lattice. It's called just a soft deformer. No, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> if there's a lattice brush, um, yeah, tail definitely. That's something I want to do. Just add a tail, like a mini devil tail that would be good yeah I think the the wings um, help and it sort of like helps with the flow of the, the design as well so yeah definitely something we'll we'll tweak and and fix for the next stream hopefully always oh hey Felipe todo bien zero cartoon good to have you here mate um the deformer brush yeah look like those oh okay um yeah most of the deformers are lattice if a lattice um a lattice would be the deformers really so the soft deformer will be a lattice um so what program are you using this is zbrush this is zbrush and it's a fantastic sculpting uh sculpting tool or you know for everything really oh the quiver that's right. Okay, cool. So the quiver is it the place where you hold the arrows? That's the quiver. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. I'll I'll just call it so I, I don't you know. This is good to know. The quiver. Let's put it there for the time being. All good. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Um. I think yeah, I think we did. You know, a good setup of this guy. Uh, it's not gonna be a, a lot more complicated than when we what we have so far. Uh, I just add the uh, we'll add the arrows, maybe detail some some bits and pieces, but I wanna keep it within this sort of style that is very very clean, very simple meshes and and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, make sure that you tune in next time. So next week we we won't have the stream. Will be the following week, so in the the twenty third of this month. Um, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap up this project. And that's about it, really. Um, just before I let you go again, I'll let you know for those of you who weren't here. If you go to the um, 3D Concept Artist website, I'll put a link again. I have a free workshop coming up um, on the weekend, my weekend. Well, start with my weekend. So uh, if you go to the 3D Concept Artist and click on the Robot Concept Workshop, I'm basically going to teach you a very simple and extremely powerful workflow to come up with these type of concepts in you know three days like an hour each day so we're gonna do something like this essentially uh, it's gonna be exactly like this obviously a different robot because this one is the one that I did while I was creating the program and creating the uh, what we were gonna do like testing it basically um, so it's gonna be exactly like this but slightly different robot and I will provide the uh, some of the assets and things that I use 
to create this. And again, it's just three days, but no more than an hour or so a day. It's just up to you whatever you want to do after the, the workshop, like maybe add more details or tweak shapes, whatever it is. But uh, it's going to be pretty cool. And I hope that it's going to help you guys. So I'll put it there. Uh, if you go to that website, the Robot Concept Workshop, you can just go ahead and yeah, um, sign up for it. All you have to do is just click on sign up and put your uh, your name and email and tick that little box here. Uh, the email is just whatever you want me to send you the uh, the email. So make, oh, sorry, the the link. So make sure there's an email that you use uh, often. And we'll start pretty soon on my Saturday. So this is uh, Australia time. So in 9 a.m. Australia time, it's kind of like at the time that I do the streams as well for Pixelogic, but it's going to be on Saturday. So for, for you, for some of you guys, I think we started on, on Friday. Uh, anyway, so just thought I'll let you know, guys. And once again, a shout out to Daniele, one of the extra mile um, students from my course online that just got to the top row and it looks absolutely fantastic. So this is uh, what he was being, or the, the project that he has been working for for a while um, on on the course that I have online, the Extra Mile. So just have a look at it, go to the Zero Central and have a look, it's fantastic. And he shares some of the, the making of, um, some of the tools that he used and, you know, really, really cool stuff, like definitely worth um, having a look at that. So um, yeah, let's just, um, oh, by the way, so if if you're interested in this sort of uh, workshop as well, I just put it in our station, just, just to share a few other images so you can go ahead and uh, I'll put a link here if you want to just have a look at some other stuff because I put like the you know um, this quick time lapse of the compositing and the and the setting up the shaders and all of that uh, which is something that I cover as well in the in the um, the workshop that is coming up so um, yeah so I'm gonna leave it here guys thank you again for uh, tuning in and I will see you in a couple of weeks or no, or if you go into the workshop as well, I'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. Uh, how beginner friendly is the workshop? Just, uh, it's not very beginner friendly. I seen I don't cover most of the basic basics, but feel free to, to join in. Um, if you, if you struggle with it, um, maybe, maybe wait for a different workshop that I do for beginners, but, um, you know, it, it might help you, might not, it might give you ideas. So up to you. Cool. Uh, is Zero like Blender? Uh, no, not at all. Um, you can do similar things, but it's a it's a different monster on its own. All right, uh, gotta go now. So have a good one, guys, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks or in the weekend if you join to the uh, to the workshop.